Okay, here's our experimental setup to determine if we can uh, measure how endothermic sodium chloride going into solution is compared to how exothermic calcium chloride is. Over here we have the sodium chloride and here's about 16.7 grams and about 16.7 grams of uh, calcium chloride. This is a food additive calcium chloride. So if we can show you what that package looked like. Purchased it off Amazon's used for wine making and so forth. It was in a pellet form, so I used a mortar and pestle to grind it up, make it more similar to the to the sodium chloride, which is just table salt. It's just Morton sea salt. Okay, got 150 grams of distilled water in each of these cups. I've weighed that out, so what we're going to do is use these digital scientific thermometers oops, upside down. Um, we're reading in degrees C right at the moment. Looks like 24.6, just room air. Let's see what the water looks like in both of them. It's going to be hard to see that up there where the camera is. Looks like 23.6. Okay, 23.6. So both cups of water are at 23.6 degrees Celsius. Okay, now what I'm going to do is go ahead and add both of these, these waters in there, stir them up a little bit, and we'll see what happens. This is the sodium chloride of water. This is the calcium chloride with the water. Okay. Roughly a 10% solution, pretty close in each of these. Okay, we've been sitting, sitting around for about five minutes. Let's see what the uh, temperatures are doing. 22.7. I believe that's probably about it for the sodium chloride. We'll wipe that off. Put in the calcium chloride, 38. Okay, we're probably going to be losing the heat now if it's sitting around. So we'll say this went to 38 degrees Celsius. Okay, to demonstrate our endothermic process where the solution temperature decreased, we sodium chloride, just solid sea salt, Morton sea salt, added distilled water to it. It's ionized into... Na plus and Cl minus. The water temperature goes to a lower temperature, decrease. Heat energy always flows from hotter to colder. In this case, heat energy flows from the hotter environment into the cooler solution. We used 10% where we had 16.7 grams of sodium chloride, 150 grams of distilled water, and uh, the water temperature started at 23.6 degrees Celsius. The water was added mixed with the sodium chloride. After five minutes, the water temperature is 22.7 degrees C. So a slight decrease from 23.6 to 22.7, but it was endothermic. No question about that. Now for our exothermic process, where the solution temperature will increase, we use calcium chloride. In this case, solid calcium chloride. We added distilled water to it. The calcium will ionize to uh, it's such divalent, you get Ca plus 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 two Cl minuses. Uh, the temperature will increase. In this case, heat energy flows out of the hotter solution to the cooler environment. Similar to the sodium chloride, we used 10%, added 150 grams of distilled water to 16.7 grams of calcium chloride. The water started out at 23.6 degrees Celsius. And the water was added and mixed with the calcium chloride, and after five minutes, the temperature is 38. Significantly exothermic. And I might mention that for both the sodium chloride and the calcium chloride and the water, they all had been equilibrating to as close to room temperature as possible over the previous uh, night. When something goes in a solution that's endothermic, like the sodium chloride, the sodium chloride solution, as the ions disassociate, and go into solution. 
that can accommodate more heat energy. So energy, heat energy flows from the environment, the cup, the air, whatever, into the solution. When something's exothermic, like the calcium chloride, the solution can't accommodate as much of that heat. So it goes out to the environment, heats up, heats up the cup, heats up the air, and so forth. And as you can see from this experiment, it's pretty pretty significant effect. There's other things that are significantly more endothermic than sodium chloride, like ammonium nitrates used in ice packs. It's extremely endothermic when it goes into solution. Okay, now that we've demonstrated that sodium chloride is slightly endothermic and calcium chloride very exothermic, let's see which one will do a better job of melting ice. Okay, for our ice melting experiment, what we're going to do is I've frozen uh, two cups of 100 milliliters, actually 100 grams of distilled water in each of these cups, been exposed to the same temperature. We're going to put one of these ice cubes in each of these pans. This is our sodium chloride, our endothermic stuff, and this is that. And that, there's 20 grams sodium chloride and 20 grams of calcium chloride. So we'll go ahead and start this. Now I'm just going to try to do it the best I can here. Okay. We'll put the sodium chloride on first. We'll see if it'll all come out of there and just pile it on the top of it. Okay. And we'll do the calcium chloride. Well, as you can see, there's differences in bulk density and that sort of thing. It's hard to do this exactly the same. We're going to start our timer. And we'll see how long it takes to melt. I can already see a big difference. Calcium chloride is really going to work on that ice cube. I don't know if I can zoom in on this or not. We'll see. A little bit better there. Wow, big difference. I imagine the uh, fact that calcium chloride dissociates into... Um, One minute and zero seconds. Calcium 2 plus and two chloride ions probably helps. It also helps that it's exothermic. I mean, that just adds to this. But it's really, really melting that ice cube very quickly. We'll let this run and see how long it takes for most of the ice cubes to uh, turn to liquid. One thing I learned very quickly is the calcium chloride definitely began melting the um, ice much, much quicker than the sodium chloride. But the, the uh, clump of uh, calcium chloride fell to one side. I decided just to leave it alone and... Uh, as you can see, the sodium chloride pretty much stayed on the center. And uh, it, it did teach me that if you're going to use these things to melt the ice, like in your sidewalk, it's very important just to spread it out uniformly. Don't let it clump up. And uh, so in just a minute here, we're going to see that the calcium chloride will finish first as far as it all being melted. And I, I kind of would have expected that. And... Uh, then we'll uh, we'll go from there. Since the iPad timer shut off, I used the video timer and found the uh, calcium chloride had completely melted after about an, an hour and 29 minutes. Then I was able to restart the iPad timer and it took another 14 and a half minutes to finish the sodium chloride. Okay, I believe the uh, 
calcium chloride side is essentially completely melted. So we're going to start the timer again since we got a little bit of ice on the sodium chloride side left. We'll see how much more time it takes to finish that off. Now there's a clump of bubbles in the middle of the sodium chloride and this finishes, but it's not ice, just bubbles. Okay, I'm going to call that sodium chloride side completely melted. Let's check the temperature of the water. 12.2, 18 degrees C. You can see that the um, sodium chloride table salt actually did a pretty good job of melting uh, all the ice. Just took another 14 and a half minutes. Um, and uh, the remaining melt water was a little cooler in the uh, sodium chloride side than it was in the calcium side, which you would expect since the difference between endothermic and exothermic. This is uh, a container of something called ice melt. It's about 12 pounds, bought it at Walmart. It says it's good down to minus 15 degrees F. I know the calcium chloride itself will, is good down to about minus 25. Um, Whereas just plain salt, sodium chloride is only good about 10 degrees, positive 10 degrees. Uh, this is a blend. And let's see if we can see what's in it. Okay, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. It says this product contents is sodium chloride, calcium chloride, and magnesium chloride. So it's a blend. We have a major ice storm coming tonight and tomorrow here in South Carolina. I might get a chance to use this. But we usually use these kind of things sparingly because we don't want to put any more salt into the environment than we have to, just for it's a safety hazard. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please uh, click on the round subscribe button, like the video, and uh, check out our other links. We appreciate it. Thank you.